You've probably heard me talk about boundaries and values and red flags and deal breakers on this channel before. But when you're struggling with retroactive jealousy, sometimes it can be difficult to know whether what you're struggling with is rational or irrational. Whether your partner's past is actually a deal breaker or whether you're struggling with irrational retroactive jealousy OCD. If you're struggling with this question of whether or not your jealousy is rational or not, I think you're gonna to wanna to see this video. My name is Zachary Stockhill, and since 2013, I've been working one-on-one -on -one with men and women from around the world, helping them overcome retroactive jealousy, helping them decide whether or not their jealousy is rational or irrational. If you'd like more information about my work or you'd like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, please visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. Okay, I received a comment on a video recently from someone we'll call Kay. Kay writes, my girlfriend's past makes me sick. What if this is becoming a deal breaker and retroactive jealousy OCD at the same time? Thank you for your question, Kay. The first thing I will say, and the most important thing I can tell you in this video, is the first thing you need to do is get a handle on your brain. Everything follows from that. What I mean by that is, the only way you will know whether your girlfriend's past is actually a deal breaker, whether or not your jealousy is mostly irrational or rational, the only way you can answer this question is to first get a handle on your brain, get some control over your thoughts, get some control over your anxiety and fear responses. Getting some degree of peace and mental stability should be your top priority right now because everything follows from that. I've recorded other videos in this channel about values and deal breakers and red flags and green flags and all that stuff. I'm actually working on an entire masterclass right now devoted to this question of, you know, what's a deal breaker, what's red flag, how to answer that question for yourself, how to get in touch with your own boundaries and values and relationships and all the rest. It's a big topic. But if you take away nothing else from this video, I would say do whatever you need to do to start getting a handle on your brain as quickly as possible because you can only make that decision. You can only get that clarity once you have some degree of mental stability moving forward. So what does that mean? Well, if you're struggling with things like intrusive thoughts or some symptoms that we might associate with OCD or any of the classic symptoms associated with retroactive jealousy, such as unwanted intrusive thoughts, obsessive curiosity about your partner's past, digging into their past on social media, struggling with what I call mental movies about your partner's past relationships and or sexual history, you're struggling with all these symptoms, there are a number of avenues that you can go down. You can read a book, you can talk to a therapist, you can talk to a coach, you can take one of my courses, you can take someone else's course. The point is there are multiple options available to you to start getting a handle on your brain as quickly as possible. Maybe my wonderful YouTube editor can post a card above my head. I posted a lengthy lecture, a preview from one of my online courses about the book Brain Lock and how the book Brain Lock can help you with some of the symptoms that you might associate with OCD. Uh, and how this relates to retroactive jealousy. So you'll see a card above my head with a link to that video. Watch that video, I think you'll find that helpful. And aside from taking all those steps seriously, you can investigate things like meditation and conscious breathing and conscious visualization. These are just examples, but the point is there are all kinds of techniques that can help you get a handle on OCD or symptoms that you might associate with OCD, such as mindfulness and cognitive behavioral therapy and all the rest. But only then, once you've started to get some kind of handle on your brain, will you be able to see more clearly. And a lot of retroactive jealousy sufferers deal with this. They'll come to me, they'll sign up for one of my courses, they'll send me emails expressing that they're not really sure whether they're dealing with irrational retroactive jealousy or whether their partner's past is actually a deal breaker. I've also had a lot of coaching clients that fit this description. And once they start putting into practice everything I talk about in my online courses and some of the ideas that I share in the videos in this channel, once they start putting the steps into, into action, once they start taking the necessary steps, all of a sudden they start to gain the clarity and peace of mind and perspective where previously all that had been lacking. They start to see things more clearly. They start to realize, oh, this is actually not a deal breaker. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm creating all these problems in my head that aren't really there. This isn't really important because X, Y, and Z are what's actually important. And this other nonsense from my girlfriend's past is actually not important at all. My brain is making this a way bigger deal than it actually is in reality, than I actually believe it is deep in my own heart. And that's another important point, you know? If you're struggling with this question of whether or not your partner's past is a deal breaker and, and all these things, you know, I can give you a bunch of my own deal breakers in relationships. In other words, things that I've encountered from women when I've been dating them that would qualify as a deal breaker to me. 
certain things that I want to keep well out of my life, you know, certain characteristics or, or certain past patterns of behavior that someone tells me about that are glaring warning signs to me, glaring red flags. I can give you a million of those things. And if you talk to most men, I think they can give you a bunch of their red flags and deal breakers and all the rest. But what's really important here is that you arrive at your own conclusions. You arrive at your own perspective. You arrive at your own answers to these important questions relating to what constitutes a deal breaker, what constitutes a red flag. And of course, outside perspective can be helpful. You know, I have certain mentors and certain people that I learn from, men I respect, whose opinions I really value. And certainly I've incorporated a lot of my views on women, dating, and relationships from these men. But at the end of the day, my values are my values. I've spent a lot of time thinking about all this stuff, arriving at the conclusions that I've arrived at. But I was only able to do that once I truly got a handle on my own retroactive jealousy OCD, you know, over 10 years ago. I couldn't have arrived at the conclusions that I've arrived at today if I'd still been trying to sort through, you know, my OCD symptoms and the intrusive thoughts and the curiosity and all the rest. It was necessary for me to get a handle on my brain first before I had the clarity and perspective about what's really important to me, my boundaries and values, and all the rest. So as I often tell people who come to me for help with retroactive jealousy OCD, if you take the necessary steps, good things will follow. And it really is as simple as that. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for following along today. If you benefited from this video or you got anything out of this, please take a minute to let me know by clicking the like button below. You can also leave a comment telling me what you think. And while you're at it, please be sure you're subscribed to my channel as well to be notified of new videos moving forward. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.